Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, and welcome to Command Power, the show in which we discuss all things Magic the Gathering with a focus on Commander. And today we have another episode in our Spoiler Spotlight series in which I talk about, well, spoilers and tell you what my thoughts are on them. But before that, just a quick reminder to click subscribe if you enjoy my videos. We're well on our way to a million subscribers and your support means everything to me. And today we're going to be talking about Counterpoint. For three colorless, one blue and one black, it's an instant that says counter target spell. You may cast a creature instant sorcery or planeswalker spell from your graveyard with mana value less than or equal to that spell's mana value without paying its mana cost. So this is super interesting. When I saw this spoiled I was quite surprised because it's not the kind of effect that I thought we'd be seeing in this set. So magic has a long and story tradition of having five mana counter spells which tend not to be great because the issue is the massive loss of tempo that you accrue by leaving up five mana to counter an opponent's spell which might end up costing less than what you paid. So over the years we've had lots of counter spells that have have tried to fix this. Some have given you creature tokens when you counter that's giving you a little bit of board presence in exchange for keeping the mana up. Some of them have given you treasures so that if you counter something expensive you're actually gaining mana, thus meaning that the risk of having to leave five mana up can sometimes be mitigated. Some very interesting ones such as counter lat have actually let you cast a card from your hand that shares a card type with the card you're countering and that's what I think this is most similar to. That one costs six mana and this one costs five but apart from that I think this one is also significantly better in a couple of ways. So I'm going to attempt to compare this card to Counterlash. For a start, it's way, way easier to meet the condition of Counterpoint. As long as it's not super early in the game, or if you're a mill deck, it doesn't even matter if it's early in the game because you're always going to have stuff in your graveyard, then this becomes much easier to fulfill the condition than Counterlash. Counterlash requires you to counter a kind of spell that you have one of in hand and then want to play that spell type at the same time. That's not always going to be the case. If you're countering an instant, for example, with Counterlash, but the only other instant in your hand and is a removal spell that doesn't currently have a target or a board wipe, then it's not really going to be quite as good because you're not going to be able to take full advantage of the second part of the spell and you're basically just going to be paying six mana for a counter spell at that point, which is obviously a horrific rate. With this card, Counterpoint, you get to actually play a creature or a planeswalker from your graveyard if you want to, which immediately adds to your board presence and is good in most situations, particularly if we're talking about a creature. So the fact that you can just counter anything you want and instantly get the best creature back from your graveyard with lesser mana value of course than what you're countering is very very strong. It does again want you to be countering more expensive things because if you're countering something very cheap you're not going to get full value out of this once again. But it does seem more likely that you'll have a cheap creature in your graveyard that you can take advantage of than always having to have the exact same card type as the thing you're countering in hand. So for me it seems like a very interesting twist in that long line of expensive counter spells. Of course the same things always apply leaving up five mana isn't always feasible it's definitely a lot of mana probably going to be a lot better in decks that are interested in playing at instant speed so something like a Nimrus deck would probably be interested in this since you're probably playing things during your opponent's turn more often than not but as we've said a few times during this spoiler season it's exactly my kind of card one that's going to force interaction with your opponents one that's going to allow you to make some very different plays that are going to shake up the game and make every game play out differently and one that's absolutely going to create memorable situations so I'm really really looking forward to putting this one in a deck. I might have to slot it into my Ancient One deck seeing as that deck is interested in milling anyway so it should be pretty good there. I can just totally envision countering a really expensive spell and getting my Sepulchral Primordial back from the graveyard or something absolutely massive which is completely game changing. Super interesting card, can't wait to play with it. So there you have it, those have been my thoughts on this new spoiler. What do you think about this card? Please let me know in the comments section below, I read all comments and respond to all of them too. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click like or subscribe, it really helps the channel. And until next time, take care.